Hey y'all, all right, as you can see, I'm out here working on the, the Ram, 94 Dodge Ram 3500 pickup. And I'm going to work on the back brakes a little bit. This wheel cylinder was leaking. I pulled the drum off yesterday um, while I had the tires off. And I was just going to look at the brake shoes. The brake shoes actually look really nice. I don't see a lot of problems with them. They're not terribly thin. That's the thinnest one, and it's not even that thin. But the wheel cylinder is leaking, so that's not good. I've got new wheel cylinders. I'm going to put them on. i got to get all of this stuff, all the brake shoes apart. So, common trick when you're working on drum brakes. Leave one side together. Take one side apart. That way you know how stuff goes, comes apart. Of course, there's other ways too. You can look at manuals as well. Whatever you like. Take pictures with your phone. What have you got a whole lot of parts for this thing we'll just go through the hall um, been to the junkyard two or three times I've got tires used tires already mounted on the wheels now so they're ready to go um, to the other two they're over there on the other side of that table workbench I've got new rear shocks Gabriel Hijacker air shocks, new plug wires. Here's the air hose kit for the shocks. I've got, let's see, new sway bar in links. I've got new lights. These are from a little company called Nylight. They're LEDs. They're going to go right here where the old ones went. So, that's going to be one of the things we're going to be changing out. Um, yeah, I got NGK plug wires. I got sway bar mounting bushings. These are to mount the sway bar to the frame for the front. And unfortunately, I was unable. I didn't think about the fact that they could be, they were sold as a pair. So I've got another pair of them coming. So I've got four pair, but they're two different sizes. So I didn't know what size I had, so I ordered both sizes. Oh well, we can send some back. Inside here, first and foremost, I'm gonna pop the hood because I've got exhaust manifold gaskets coming for this. And this manifold is leaking. There's a leak there on that manifold. So I'm going to soak the fasteners down. I've already been soaking down the wheel cylinder, the lines, the metal lines to the wheel cylinders. Those nuts have broken loose. They're fine. They're not rounding off or stripping or anything. Um, in here, unlock that door over there. Here is one thing I'm really happy that I found. And it seems silly, but it's just the truth. This is the parking brake release cable. This whole piece was missing from the truck altogether. I got that yesterday. That was really nice. There's the wiper transmission there, the wiper linkage. Um, I got the cup holder assembly out. I'm gonna work on that, get that working better. It was caught where it wouldn't even come out of here. All the plastic for that is just like, just horrible. It literally, it bolts to this, this fascia, bezel fascia piece that just goes around all the gauges and stereo and everything. I uh, got an oil change, air filter for it. I got new sun visors. They're not new. They're used out of the salvage yard, but they're cleaned up and they're way nicer than these. Um... Then let's see what else. Oh, tailgate. Got a tailgate for it, and it's the same color, so that's nice. So, yeah. And uh, I've got another tail light. 
for the other side over there, for the left side, because, well, this one, or not that one, but this one, as you can see, this one's pretty well crap. It's got melted, and it's just really, really in bad shape. I mean, the tail lights work now. All the light, most all the lights work now really well. So, anyway, yeah, so, you know, there's the cup holder mechanism. Um, I want to put something in here to flop down like this piece did. This would flop down originally, but it's made out of such just brittle, cheap plastic that it just like falls apart in your hands. I mean, it literally is just literally falling apart. Here's part of the, the dash piece itself. Back then, Dodge was using such just incredibly poor, cheap plastic that it just was like literally falling apart in your hands especially after it got a few years old. So, there we go. Oh, here, wait a minute. Yeah, this was the only part of the park and brake release handle I had when we got the truck, so. Wow, okay. So. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna show you, oh. Still gotta get a wiper motor for it. That's coming, that's gonna be here in the next couple of days. There's the other side, here's the tires for the other side. Um, I went to a couple of different places for the tires. Most of the stuff here though came from uh, Lambert's Junkyard Salvage Yard in Knoxville, Tennessee. So if you wanna check that out, it's a good place to find a Quite a few of these late, these older model Dodge trucks like this. Um, all right, so I'm going to get to work on this. Show you a little bit more after I get into it. Okay, be right back. Okay, y'all, we are back, and just using this tool here to get these retainer clips off. Um, one of the things that happens is these clips, these little retainer pins can turn with this, uh, this retainer piece here that retains that spring. Basically, you know, I have, I've got another idea that might, I may not have to remove these, these retainers here on Drum brakes, you see these, okay? I've got another idea. Here, here we go. Let's see. Brake spring pliers. If you're gonna do any work on drum brakes, I know there's people that can do work on drum brakes without these, but these just make life a little bit easier for me anyway. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Well, I'm holding the tripod between my legs. So I'm gonna try to do this without. There we go. Okay. That guy right there. I'm going to maybe do this. Maybe I can do this. See how I used this part of the brake spring pliers as a handle to give me some leverage. Can I do it? Uh, yay, there we go. Okay, now my idea is to basically pry these back apart enough to where I can get the wheel cylinder out and get the new one in. So, on the back, back there, let's see if I can get you a better picture. Move the light down here. See, there's the, there's the line. There's a... Okay, all right. Yeah, I had to had to see it for myself. There's two bolts there. You see, there's a you see the bolt and then, then the bleed screw. There's a little rubber cap over the bleed screw. Don't ignore the big giant bolt right there. That's not important. So, okay, I've already broken that line loose earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get those nuts broken loose. Well. I think I'm going to pull these brake shoes apart a little bit if I can. 
And uh, let's see. I may need a pry bar of some sort. There we go. Okay. Now, basically, I'm just going to pull these apart. I'm going to pull these out. See, just like that. Retain them. They're not side specific or anything like that. You can, they can, they're interchangeable. There's no big deal there. So, I may have to leave that one just like that. Can I get it? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that those little pieces, they are interchangeable. The um, cylinder wheel cylinder pins, I guess. I never did learn what the name of those were. So, eh. if you know what the name of those are, just comment down below. I don't mind. Okay. So. Now, I'm going to get my so, couple of sockets, maybe, and a ratchet and get this son of a gun off. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. I've got the wheel cylinder off, the old one that's laying right down there. And it is, it was rust. There was so much rust around here that it was just, let me change this camera setting here. Okay, there was so much rust around this that it was causing problems uh getting this out i was having to actually hammer on it a little bit to get it to come out uh while i was taking it out i was having brake fluid collect on here as you can see i've got brake fluid coming out of the line which is great uh it's just dripping out of there i'm not i've not went up there and hit the brakes or nothing so that's great all right so the bolts are let's see what they are 13 millimeter. Yeah, that's what those those are. So we're gonna get this wheel cylinder out. These are not side specific. As long as you got that bleeder screw at the top and your bolt holes line up and everything else is pretty good. I think we're good to go. So um now you can go so far as to clean these up and, and paint them and all of that, but I'm not going to because this truck has got to roll here in another two weeks. I'm going to be pulling a camper with it. The camper I've been pulling with that truck right there, the 04 Dodge Ram 1500, I've been pulling that camper with it. This is going to start pulling it and, uh, but we've got a lot of work to do, so I'm going to get on it. I'm going to go ahead and install this wheel cylinder. Um, a tip for doing this, go ahead and get your line. Get your line started first, okay? The tubing nut or the line nut, whatever you want to call it. Get that started first, then get your... Get your the bolts that hold it in place get those put on next okay so i'm going to pause this for just a minute and then i'm gonna show you okay be right back okay here we go we got the little push pins of the uh the wheel cylinder pins in i've got the see the well right there I've got the bolts tightened up I've got the line tightened up I'm gonna once I get this all put together I'm gonna break that bleeder screw loose and see if it'll gravity bleed I think it will so just need to get the air out of the system okay you need air that might have got trapped in the lines so um, as you can see I left this part here this part all together this spring has just got to come up. First, this is going to go on, then the orange spring. I cleaned all of this with my pressure washer. It's just a little green work 1700 PSI. It's not much. But, hey, it gets the job done. I used a little bit of degreaser on all of this. So, I think it's going to work just fine. The brakes on this worked great, by the way. So, I don't have any complaints about the brakes themselves. It's just... This thing, the wheel cylinders were, the wheel, this wheel cylinder was leaking over here. So I don't want that. 
can't have that. You gotta have that working like it's supposed to. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to put this on and just reverse of what I did earlier. Kind of reverse of what I did earlier, although I'm going to be using this end. You can see this has the little hook on the end right there. That hook is going to hook onto here, okay? And then I'm going to put it through here and pull that spring. Well, I was going to pull the spring and bracket assembly. I'm going to have to pause this. Well, I'll tell you what, just hold on for a minute here. Let's see, I need a light down here. Okay. Okay, I see where things, I see where it all went. this I'll be right back folks well I'll tell you what I'll show you where this goes this goes this goes right there I'm trying to get a light on it just to show you where it goes there's a little slot right there that's where it goes okay so let me get this in there and I'll show you some more. Be right back. Okay, y'all, I got it all back together here. Um, when you're prying these on with this, I'll just show you, okay, I'll just show you this orange spring. It's a little chaotic. I'm trying to get the light in a good place to show everything off. And let's see. Uh, maybe you're up there. Okay. So anyway, I'm gonna take the orange spring off. So we'll just do it like before. Press in, push in, then you turn at the same time and pry it off, and it comes off. Now you can put, go back on. You do just opposite. Make sure that the spring stays in the little hole right there in the shoe. It goes upside down like that. So this is where two hands comes in real handy. So um, let's see. Okay, I think I may have it here with one, with one hand. I might be able to do it with one hand, maybe. Okay, so this is going to be a little chaotic, a little dramatic. I'm just trying to check everything, make sure everything's okay. And my spring falls out. Okay, my little push wheel cylinder pin I decided to get cocked up. Okay, now it's in place. Yeah, that thing was, that was out of it was pushed back behind the brake shoe. So now we get the spring again. Okay. And let's see if I can do this one-handed. Okay, you just pry on, you put your little hook. Okay. There we go. That's how it works. Now, you'll want to give a little tappy tap because we've got a little gap right there. We want to take that gap up. Also, um, if you do have a little gap right there, you can sometimes take both hands at the same time and hit both of these shoes at the same time and get that to close up. I'm going to break the bleeder screw loose, and there's probably some trap. I'm sure there's some trapped air in there. 
Um, but yes, I like to use some degreaser and my pressure washer to clean all this up because it saves me a hell, hell of a lot of money on um, the, uh, saves a whole lot of money on brake parts cleaner, you know, so you can save that brake parts cleaner for something else. Okay, now the other side is going to be exactly like this, so I'm not going to film that because there's really no need, but that is the wheel cylinder replacement. The drum on these is beautiful. They just slide right on. They're just gorgeous. I love that. There's none of this. The old days, you had to take the hub, this axle out, all of these bolts off, axle out, you had to... There's nuts, two large nut retaining nuts in here, plus a lock washer. You had to take break them loose, take that loose, take the hub off with the drum because it was all the drum was captured by the wheel studs, which is crazy to me. But that's how they used to do it. And uh, somebody, some smart cookie somewhere said, "Hey." You know, we've got this system on cars for a long time where we just slide the drum up over the hub, over the axle hub. Can we not do that in a bigger truck as well? And everybody's kind of scratching their heads, probably thinking, uh, yeah, maybe so. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Uh, let me show you a couple more things on my junkyard haul. Uh, real quick. Oh, also, real quick. In case you're like me and you were wondering about these tailgates for the dually and the non-dually trucks. As far as I can tell, they're exactly the same. I did have to adjust these striker pins a little bit, you know, just like a door. Just like one of the striker pins on the doors up there. I had to adjust these striker pins a little bit. Once I did, the thing shuts really nicely. Uh, it's not perfectly aligned yet, but I'll work on that. Um, also, let's see. Let's go in the garage and I'll show you what else I got for the dolly. That's what my wife calls the dooley after Dolly Parton. So, anyway, this is the idler arm. It's used. Yes, I know. And the steering gearbox, This is these are off of a three-quarter ton. Uh, there wasn't a one ton in the salvage yards. So I'm thinking these will work out. I compared these parts online on a parts, uh, at a parts store. And they have the same part number for the three-quarter ton and the one ton. So maybe I'm in good luck. Maybe I've got good luck here. I don't know. We'll have to see. Oh, that's my, that's mine. I got that yesterday. Um, also, junkyard haul. That's just your time, not time and cover. That's the bracket assembly Dodge Magnum V8. So, AC compressor mounts here, alternator mounts here. Um, and, you know, this mounts to like the timing cover and to the intake manifold and the one of the cylinder heads. So, there we go. Anyway, I didn't have to, don't have very much in this whole entire project either. The truck, plus all my parts I've gotten so far, including the tires. And I've also got, when I bought three of these tires, I got these three wheels right here. So... If any, any of y'all need these wheels, they're three-quarter ton Dodge. Um, they're three-quarter ton Dodge, eight lug, and they've got chrome, and they are really nice. They're dirty right now, but they're really nice because the chrome's not peeling or pitted or the wheels aren't dented or bent or, you know, mangled up any. I mean, they're... If that thing was a three-quarter ton, I'd be using these wheels, but it's not, so there you go. Anyway, you, if one of y'all needs these or wants these, uh, drop me an email, slantfish65sd at gmail.com. 
and I will uh, will talk about it, and maybe we can make, come up with a deal. Okay. So, all right, that job is done, and that means this video is done because I've still got to do the other side, and I cleaned the other side up, just like this side, just like the passenger side. But I've got a lot of nice new great parts for this thing, and I'm really excited about getting this thing driving better, running better, and everything like that. Oh. My total so far on uh, what I've got in this is less than $5,000. And I drove this home two hours. Okay, so. All right. I'm going to get off here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. God bless. Have a great one.